Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And tonight I'm going to tell you another story out of the shadow box here. We're going to talk about this bait right here, an 8 inch Huddleston. More importantly, we're going to talk about the biggest limit of my life and all the craziness that surrounded it. Uh, the day that I was throwing this particular bait, I had a 51 pound limit. And that's kind of jumping way to the end of the story but you're gonna see why. Uh, that day actually started four days, five days earlier. I was up on Clear Lake with a good friend of mine, Sig. Sig and I were just out fishing, goofing off. He gets a phone call and it was a buddy of his who was also out on the water and they said they bumped into Trev Gowdy. And at the time I had no idea who that was, uh, but they bumped into Trev Gowdy. He was filming a TV show and they were struggling to catch the right fish and they wanted to know if Sig wanted to get involved. So we blasted off, you know, 70 miles an hour headed up lake to wherever they were and I was just a passenger. I was out with my buddy fishing for the day, uh, riding back seat. We got up there and uh, got introduced to these guys and they started talking to Sig. I was just sitting in the back of the boat. They were talking to him about doing a TV show on Clear Lake because they had, I guess they had come out from the East Coast to film uh, an episode of Monster Fish, which is still on today, uh, and an episode of Quest for the One, both uh, you know, big fishing shows. Uh, they all started talking, and I was just sort of half in and half out, just doing my own fishing, and Sig started talking to them about what they wanted to do, and they explained that they were out here trying to catch a 10-pounder, and their timing was not working out for them. So Sig turned to me, and I'll never forget this. Sig turned to me and he's like, if you want to catch a 10 pounder, you should be talking to that guy. And points at me on the back of the boat. And, and all these dudes on this other boat all turn and look at me and they're like, well, who are you? And this is, I don't even know how long ago this was. We shot this show seven or eight years ago. Uh, so I'm like, well, hi guys, my name is Matt. Uh, I like fishing. <laughs> you know, totally awkward conversation out on the lake. I'm just out trying to fish with my buddies. And they're like, well, can you catch a 10 pounder? And I'm, I try to be a realist, you know? So I'm like, listen, nobody in their right mind is gonna guarantee you a 10 pounder, but sure, I mean, we can try and catch a big fish. What's the deal? And they're like, well, you know, same story. We came out here from the East Coast, we're out here shooting these TV shows and we wanna catch a giant fish. And I'm like, well, do you wanna catch giant smallmouth or giant largemouth or what do you guys really want? And they're like, well, is both an option? You know, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm, I'm sitting on my buddy's boat. At the time, I didn't even own a bass boat. So maybe this story is actually a few years earlier than I'm thinking it was. Uh, I didn't even have a boat yet. But these guys were like, hey, we'll do both. I'm like, well, I think we could do both. And Trev, which I don't know if you guys know Trev, Monster Fish is still running today. He's got a handful of other shows. Uh, his dad was Kurt Gowdy, famous sports announcer. Uh, but Trev is like, well, here's my number. Give me your cell number. Let's talk this evening. So Sig and I get off the water right away and I call my dad on the phone. I'm like, hey dad, I just met this guy and he wants to film a TV show and I need to borrow your boat. And my dad's like, you're not taking my boat. And I'm like, no, I'm not even joking. Like I really, I need to borrow your boat. And you guys don't know my dad and I, but my dad keeps things really clean. And as you guys have seen my gear, my boat, my stuff over the years, I'm a little rough on my gear. So he's like, no man, you're not taking my boat. And I'm like, but I met this guy, his name's Trev. My dad's like, well, who is it? I'm like, I don't know, his name's Trev Gowdy. And my dad's like, Kurt Gowdy's son? I mean, he knew exactly who it was. And I'm like, yeah, I think that is him, that's him. And he's like, yeah, you're still not taking my boat. And we get off the phone and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Is, like, when is the next time I'm going to get to shoot some national show, right? So I'm sitting there like, dude, I've, I've got some good fish. I don't have a boat. And the phone rings. It's my dad. And he's like, you know what? I thought about it. You can totally take my boat. I'm like, all right, thank you so much. I'm going to come get it. So I call Trev. We make the arrangements. Long story short, I, say, I tell Trev, hey, I want you to meet me at this place called Lake Party. 
we're gonna go there, we're gonna fish for big smallmouth. And he's like, all right, we need about 48 hours to get ready, so let's meet there uh, day after tomorrow. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. Seven in the morning, lake party, let's do this. No preparation, right? I don't even know these dudes from anybody except that I get this cell phone number and I met them on the lake, and we're gonna go film a show. So we get to lake party, and it was prime time. Long story short, we stuck a 25 and a half pound bag of smallmouth, five fish. We wrecked shop on them. Uh, Trev got to stick a monster smallie. I got to stick a bunch of big smallies. Uh, that day wrapped up. And you know, the crazy thing is I never even got to see that TV show. It aired, but at the time I didn't even have a TV. So I never saw the show that I was on. Uh, but we got through that day and at the end of the day, they're like, all right, where do you want to go tomorrow? I'm like, well, there's this little lake. We're going to go to this little lake. And for the sake of the little tiny lake, even in this video, I'm not going to lay the name of it out there. But we went to a smaller lake here in Northern California. I'm like, here's the deal. We'll meet there in the morning. We'll go out. We'll try and get some big bass. No promises. So we meet there in the morning. I bring two baits. I bring a wake bait and I bring a huddle stand. We put the boat in the water. My dad's boat, it's a, I think it's a 17 and a half footer, maybe it's an 18 footer, but you got a picture. You got me on there, you've got Trev, you've got the whole camera crew. I mean, it's, this boat is crowded. And they're like, you know, they, they're not bass fishermen, so they really don't even have any idea what to expect. So they're like, all right, yesterday was good, now let's catch some giant largemouth. You know, just, just crazy. And uh, I hadn't been on this lake in a couple of weeks. It was mid-March. I knew the timing was right, it should be good, but we hadn't actually been out there. So we start cruising, I'm firing that wake bait. On my third cast, it gets slurped and I set up on this fish and it's big. Start grinding on this fish, grinding on this fish, get it in the boat, it's a 9.7, almost a 10, right? Almost nine and three quarter. We get it in the boat, we shoot all this video and all this stuff and I'm high-fiving with the guys. We get that fish and we turn her loose and Trev looks at me and he's like, I said I needed a 10 pounder. And in my mind, I'm like, I don't, I don't really even know this guy. Is he joking? Is he serious? What is going on here? Uh, but we, we just went right back to fishing, right? And kept chipping away, chipping away. And that bite turned on and it was amazing because when these, when these crews travel, they plan to fish, you know, I didn't know anything about TV shows at the time. They plan to fish like three, four, five days to build a good quality show. We fished three hours because we had to pack it in so tight because I had to give my dad's boat back. Uh, we only fished three hours and then it was, you know, getting the shots and climbing up the mountains and looking down on the lake and getting all those things that really make a TV show. The fishing portion of it was so quick, but that bite was epic. I was so blessed to have, not only to have a camera around when I caught the biggest bass of, my, or excuse me, the biggest bag of my entire life, the biggest limit, but to be able to do it on national TV was just unbelievable timing, right? It, it was not random. It was a blessing for sure. Uh, so we had that 9.7 in the boat. We kept fishing. I ended up sticking two fives, two sixes, two sevens, I believe two eights, and then my big one was a 12-7, and in a row, we were just going down the shore. I'm talking like, bam, 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 bam. Just unbelievable fishing, uh, just insane. And then I had one come up, short strike. I'm like, Trev, throw back in there, throw back in there. He fires in there, sticks an 11-9. This guy fishes for a living and has done so for decades. That's his personal best. So he gets the biggest bass of his entire life, we end up with a 51.0, 51 pounds for five bass in three hours. And we did it on this TV show. Uh, it was unbelievable. The way this whole thing went down. So as soon as we got that big one in the boat, he's like, that's it. We've got a TV show. We got to stop fishing. We got to get our camera angles. You know, they went into production mode and I'm just like, I'm just the kid, right? I'm like, but, but it's on, they're getting bigger. <laughs> I just wanted to fish, man. Uh, but we, we got the shots they needed, it was all good. Put the boat on the trailer. We literally drive from there to a restaurant, 
We all eat dinner together and just part ways. And it was over. And that, when that happened, when that TV show hit, there was all this controversy. You know, anytime somebody catches big fish, it gets all crazy. But it was, nobody knew how crazy this whole thing happened. That we literally bumped into each other on Clear Lake. Nobody knows anybody. Two days later, we have a 25 pound bag of smallies. The next day we have a 51 pound bag of largemouth, and then just poof, go our separate ways. And I didn't even talk to those guys again until the show came out and I got to watch it. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, getting to catch one of those fish is incredible. To have those fish just mowing down a swim bait just over and over. When you've got a camera crew, you've got, well, there was a video crew, and a camera crew. We even had still frames. So we got just beautiful photos of some of these fish that at the time I never would have had on my own because I was still shooting with like wind up cameras and these guys were in here. I mean, they knew what they were doing. They had flown in just for this. Truly an amazing experience. Uh, I'm sure, you know, Tim edits these videos. So I'm sure he's showing you some of those photos, but it was an absolutely amazing time one of the best days of fishing. I mean, my biggest bag ever, but aside from that, one of the best days of fishing in my entire life. Just getting to share that experience with, you know, one of these big names, if you will, but also getting to watch him catch a truly giant fish was, was awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. You know, we're going to tell you a bunch more stories, like I've said at the end of all of these videos, but this is where the passion for tactical bassin came from. These things they happened over time. We've had this addiction for a long time. We didn't just wake up one day and decide to get on YouTube and, and teach people about fishing as we go. Uh, we had this, this big bass passion, this fishing passion for so many years. And then this opportunity to share this stuff with you guys came along and, and Tim and I are both just blessed to be able to share our experience, share the things we've learned along the way and help you guys become better anglers. So we appreciate it. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.